Five seconds out, stand by. Stand by. And we are up, my cue. The National Guard is on duty in Ferguson tonight. Q. A devastating accident on I-70 leaves one dead, two injured in an interstate shutdown. Q. And the Columbia City Council Stand by is open. ready to vote on the Opus controversy. KOMU 8 News at 6 starts now. Show open is in. Governor Jay Nixon has ordered the National Guard to enter Ferguson following another night of clashes between police and protesters. Reports say two people were critically injured during protests okay, last night online. and law enforcement once again used tear gas Same to book. disperse the rowdy crowds. Good evening, I'm Brittany Pieper. And I'm Lauren Langell. Thanks for joining us tonight. Law enforcement is gearing Presume up in Ferguson for another out. potentially tense night in a city that's been Same in a package. city where violence and unrest has been there since the police shooting of death 18-year-old Michael Brown. With the arrival of the National Guard, package the state's governor lifted the midnight curfew tonight. NBC's 52. Sarah Doloff has the story. Starting this afternoon, a show of greater force as National Guard troops move into place following another night of violent protests. Overnight, the governor ordered the increased security to help quell the escalating violence and to protect the police command center. With the presence of the National Guard, the governor has lifted a midnight curfew, hoping there will not be a repeat of last night's violence. Tonight, Super we zip. will ensure Out. the safety of the citizens of Ferguson. Back in Washington, President Obama announced he is sending Attorney General Eric Holder to Ferguson on Wednesday. I understand the passions and the anger uh, that arise over the death of Michael Brown. Giving into that anger by looting or carrying guns and even attacking the police only to serves to raise tensions and stir chaos. It undermines rather than advancing justice. The clashes that erupted Sunday night are an all too okay. familiar scene in Ferguson. Police moving in with riot gear and tear gas as angry crowds challenge their authority. Further heightening tensions, the results of a preliminary autopsy report commissioned by the family shows Michael Brown was shot multiple times, the fatal blow to the top of the head. At least Super six, thin. at least six Out. shots. Could be more, but at least six. The St. Louis County Medical Examiner's Office has not released its report, but confirmed to NBC News that Brown was shot more than once in the head and chest. We believe that given Super those kind of facts, this Out. officer should have been arrested. The case is expected to go Stand before by a four. grand jury as early as Wednesday to determine if the police officer who killed Michael Brown will be charged. Q4. It the NAACP of Jefferson City plans to march on the Capitol in relation to the Michael Brown case. Their march is set to begin in just half an hour. We'll bring you an update on their efforts tonight on KOMU 8 News at 9 and 10. Staying on four. As public outcry grows louder for justice in the video. shooting death of Michael Brown, others are rallying around the police officer involved in the case. More than Let's 100 get that PC people shot demonstrated set up, outside please. a St. Louis TV station yesterday in support of Officer Darren Wilson. Some held signs saying, support our police, pray for peace. Buckets were passed around to collect donations for Wilson six. and his family. Q6. In your local news, a massive F11, accident please. involving two semi trucks we'll killed one screen. person today and had the eastbound lanes of I 70 completely closed. Take a look. This is video that one of our viewers, Brandon Spry, shared on our Stand Facebook by page just moments after that devastating accident happened. The truck was burning from the inside, sending flames Stand and smoke by. into the air. You can see it there. It all happened near She's mile in. marker 120. That's just west of a large truck stop. KOMU aide Jessica Mensch has been on the scene all day and joins us live now from the scene of the accident where I-70 eastbound lanes are still closed after more than seven hours. I'm off of I-70 where a tractor trailer crashed and burst into flames earlier today. If you look behind me, you can see behind all of this dust that's been pushed up. They're clearing out the dust with a tractor over here. But if you can see behind there, they're still working to clear out some of the wreckage. That's, that tractor back there was on fire earlier today. Bio's in. The interstate has been closed since about 1030 this morning. Here's some video you can see of crews cleaning up the wreckage Stand earlier this side. afternoon. The highway patrol says three vehicles were involved, two semis and an SUV. 
The eastbound lanes were shut down and officials redirected traffic back to exit 117. Cars were at a standstill several miles behind the accident. So it's well, it's an inconvenience, but you get used to it when you're out here on the highway. Really super. Thank you. Stand by Lauren. The driver of the truck you can see right behind me is dead, and two others were transported to the University Hospital. The Highway Patrol says one of the semis was a mail truck and the other was carrying wood. We're still unsure when the interstate will be will reopen, but it looks like they're nearing the end now that the fire has been put out. Reporting live in Boone County, Jessica Mensch, KOMU 8 News. And Q4. The Columbia City Council is set to vote tonight on a controversial student housing complex downtown. The Opus deal is one that has had locals on the edge of their seat waiting for a decision. KOMU 8's Jordan Locke is live at City Hall, where protesters are expected to gather shortly. She tells us the, ho the hoops developers will have to go through to pass the Opus development proposal. Jordan? And dissolve. The City Council is expected to take two votes tonight concerning the OPUS agreement. You can already see protesters are filing in against the OPUS, OPUS agreement. First, the City Council will vote on whether to repeal the ordinance, even though the city already issued a building permit. If that passes, they'll vote on whether to um, put the issue on the November ballot for a citizen's vote. Now, the proposal would allow OPUS to demolish buildings on Locust Street side. between 7th and 8th and develop apartments. Some residents don't want the development and are taking legal action to make sure it doesn't go through. They filed a restraining order against the city to prevent the city from taking any action other than the city council. 3,500 registered voters signed a petition to repeal the OPUS agreement, which passed earlier. Satin. We're confident that the citizens of Columbia do not support this development in the manner set forth in the development agreement. They have already uh, had a development agreement repealed by the city council after the petition was submitted. And frankly, we should not have had to submit a second petition. That that in itself is a violation of my client's rights. And Q, stand by four. I called several members of the city council and city leaders earlier today and could not reach anyone for a comment. The meeting gets underway at 7 p.m. We'll have updates for you at 9 and 10. Reporting live in Columbia, Jordan Locke, KMU 8 News. And Q4, see my graphic. In addition to the OPUS discussion, the Columbia City Council plans to talk about other community issues. Graphic the in, council stand by members six. will hear public comment on property taxes and utility rate hikes. Also on the agenda are the city budget and a discussion for increases, increasing parking fees. And the council members will have an initial vote on zoning for a development proposal at Turner Avenue and 5th Street. Tune in to KOMU 8 News at 9 and 10 where we'll update you on the council's decisions. Q6, stand by VO. Crews closed a section of Vauder School Road this morning. Take a look. This is video VO's from about 7 a.m. Right around the time that workers blocked the roadway at Vauder School Road and Scott Boulevard. The closure will allow crews to raise the roadway and repave the street. The project is part of the second phase of the Scott Boulevard construction project. Boone County Fire Protection District Station 14 is at the corner of Scott Boulevard and Vauder School Road. The city coordinated with fire crews to ensure operations could go smoothly during construction and road closures. So that's in for it spins. will cause a slight delay, but not a delay that, that um, uh, would be as much as bringing a different station from east of here uh, to the west. Q6, stand by five. Crews say they expect the closure to last three weeks. Five's in, stand by four. Things are heating up out there. Let's check in with meteorologist Rosie Newberry to find out how long we can expect the heat wave. Q, Rosie. Thank you, Lauren. It looks like summer held off for the most part. We Self haven't graphics. seen many consecutive 90 degree days, but this is the week. Ironically enough, it's the one where most students are heading back to school as well here across mid-Missouri. Check out the big jump in temperatures we've seen in just the last 24 hours. Yesterday afternoon, a lot of us didn't make it out of the upper 70s. Right now, most of us into the middle 80s at this time. And looking ahead at your weather headlines yeah, for both temperature and precipitation, we're going to have almost yeah, identical days looking forward in the future. And it looks like those yep, are going to be hot. Right now. ones as well. Best chance of precip is coming in the next 24 hours. Rosie's Give you all the in. latest details as to what you can expect in the Stand next eight days in total coming up in just a bit. Thank you. Stand coming up break. in eight minutes, a local community thinks it has the edge to boost workers and the economy. And break is in. 12 heavy, five out. Up cue.
Welcome back, everyone. Hope you've had a wonderful Monday. Hate to break it to you if you are a person who likes the temperatures that we've been seeing all summer. It's been an incredibly mild one here across mid-Missouri, but we're kind of going to uh, lose those nice temperatures as we move forward in the work week ahead. In fact, today was the coolest of the ones that we'll see for about the next seven in total. Let's talk about what's going on with your forecast. Temperatures here finally setting up that summer pattern that we normally expect to see by the time we head into July. It's now heading into late August, and we're we're finally seeing a ridge of high pressure build for our neighbors directly over to the west. We're kind of going to see the remnants of that entire ridge pattern. What it does is dry us out as far as rain chances are concerned, but of course the humidity is going to be sticking around and we can't help it. The thermometer is going to go up just a little bit. So that's really our setup moving forward in uh, the next few days and honestly very similar days expected. In fact, our next best chance of rain is coming in the next 24 hours. So let's talk about that as well. I'd even extend it maybe to say the next 36 hours. We're going to have a little pop of energy moving through the atmosphere tonight. So even as we move forward into early Tuesday morning, it doesn't look like much is happening, but we could see one tiny spot shower here or there across mid-Missouri. Nothing strong, organized, or severe, but we are continuing to watch this situation. You can see a little bit of extra cloud cover kind of making its way into the precip cast by tomorrow morning. That might actually give us a spot shower here or there, and then into the afternoon and certainly tomorrow evening as well. Really, that's going to be our best chance to get a little bit of rain here across mid mo and it's going to be very spotty at best. Otherwise, we're just looking at kind of a mix tomorrow. Sunshine and clouds, a lot like what we saw today, but we are expecting to see just a little bit more sunshine than we saw uh, this afternoon as we head into tomorrow. Not going to help us all that much either, though, because the more sunshine hits the ground, the more we start to pick up on that heat from the ground, and then everything gets just a little bit warmer. Here's a snapshot as to what we're expecting for the rest of tonight. Just some passing cloud cover. Could even have times overnight of mostly cloudy skies. Keep in mind that isolated chance of showers is there. Overnight temperatures warm. We're starting tomorrow right around the 70 degree mark and with dew points in the upper 60s, pretty close. We might even see just a little bit of patchy fog that's mostly going to be confined to low-lying areas. Shouldn't be a widespread event, but it is possible heading into tomorrow morning as well. Tomorrow afternoon, you can see that this is a warm-up on today. Highs are going to be reaching that 9-0, most of us into the upper 80s, warmest spots at 90, mostly sunny skies into the afternoon, and then we continue to see the temperatures go up. This is really it. Once we get to Wednesday, this is about all she wrote. Mostly sunny skies, highs into the middle 90s, heat index Stand values high as full. well, camera and is it not looks clear like we're yet. going to be feeling even warmer and as we head closer to this now next weekend. North clear. Callaway going to be at Mexico this week. Stand Brittany was six. just unfortunately reminding me, this is Friday Night Fever. It kicks six off this week. I can't believe five. it's already here, and unfortunately it's going to be one of the warmest days of the entire summer, so, so reminder to everybody. Uh, yeah, of course it is. A reminder to everyone, make sure you send the kids with water this week, especially those football players need to stay hydrated. All right. Thanks, Rosie. Yep. Five. Just ahead on KOMU 8 News at 6. For some Americans, tough economic times mean a time to improve their job skills. And one local community thinks they might have the right start. Stay tuned. Break. 13 heavy. Stand by. Up cue. Audrey and Stand County just joined a program package to provide certification for potential employees to help get them jobs. Now Mexico is looking to use the designation as an economic tool. KOMU 8's Beth Ann Carroll tells us what this could mean for the city. Russell Runge's job is to grow the economy of Mexico, and he thinks Audrain County's designation as a work-ready community in progress is an important step in the city's economic development. I think it's just another tool, uh, in, another, another item that allows those businesses to be able to um, um, hire employees and know that coming in, those employees have the skills that they need. The program is meant to give job seekers a chance to take a certification test to show employers they have basic math and reading skills and can locate information. Businesses can also use the information to narrow down their list of candidates. Columbia also has the designation, and Bernie Andrews says it will not only help people get jobs, but also attract more businesses. But it puts you in Super a little Zen. bit of a national spotlight Ow. for site selectors and for companies that are looking to locate or expand into counties or areas that have the qualified works, workforce. In progress, communities have two years to reach certain goals to attain full certification. The goals include getting a certain number of students and transition employees to take the test. 
Counties must also get a certain number of businesses to sign up as employer partners to recognize the goals. 30 seconds out, we'll tag on four. Getting businesses on board is the most important part of the program. That's the key to making the program work, in, from, in my opinion, is that to encourage someone to take the test, there's got to be an opportunity for a job interview and potentially a job down the road. Runge in the City of Mexico will continue to Stand work for full certification to bring more businesses to the city and get more residents working. Bethany and Carol, KOMU8 News, Mexico. Q4, stand the Missouri by six. Career Center offers the certification test to everyone. Only 10 counties ni nationwide have full work ready community certification. Q6. Dogged by consumer complaints about VL. long waits in checkout lines, Walmart is changing the way it does business now. Four the nation's largest brick and mortar retailer is promising to staff more registers during the busy upcoming holiday season. The pledge covers peak shopping hours on weekends, but can vary by individual store. The move comes as Walmart struggles to win back shoppers, with U.S. sales declining over the past two years. Four is in. Stand by video. For one Rockbridge player, last year's football season ended with him on the sidelines. See how disappointment is driving him this year. Next in sports. Break is in. Seven light. And we are up. Opens in. Now, from the Ford Sports Desk, KOMU8 Sports. And size is in. One, two, three! Cue me here. That was Coach Gary Pinkle doing the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge. And he couldn't pick a better time to do it than after a long practice in the upper 90 degree heat. But for Coach Pinkle, it's more than just a cool experience. So that's in. I had a friend named Ray Dorr, uh, you know, who passed away years ago. A great man, a great coach. Blue Super, from, uh, same by four. Gary's disease, and it, it's just it's uh, it's an ugly, ugly disease. And and, and hopefully, uh, what I've seen this do, do is it raise awareness uh, nationally uh, for this cause, uh, for research, and to you know to and hopefully help, help uh, find an answer for this stuff. Q4. Pinkle challenged Sports Center anchor John Anderson, Chancellor Lofton, and Truman the Tiger. Moving on to high school football now, after leading Rockbridge to a state championship in baseball last season, Logan Tweehouse said, now I just need one in football. KOMU 8's Eric Kelly tells us how the two-sport athlete is looking to get that done this year. So that's in. For Logan Tweehouse, the sting of defeat increased the sweetness of victory. After losing one in football and being able to make it back for baseball, uh, you know, it's super. It, it, was, it brought a great Package deal runs, of excitement and at the same time, you know, it was kind of just... Uh, a lot of weight off my shoulders. And one of those shoulders kept him out of much of the second half of the state championship game due to a broken right collarbone. You know, I just remember sitting on the bench kind of uh, just talking to Greg about how I mean I knew I wasn't, wasn't going to be able to go back in. And you know, it was the first bone I had ever broken. So I mean, the pain was something new to me. But after months of rehab, Tweehouse returned ready for baseball, but he says the best is yet to come. I mean, I wasn't able to throw it as hard uh, yet. I mean, just now, I'm just now starting to get my full uh, arm strength back. Now it's finally all starting to come together, and my arm strength is all there, the endurance is all there, and my arm's feeling the best it ever has. And with his arm back to full health, Treehouse can now focus on branding his out. own style of leadership. I'm not the most vocal leader, you know. I kind of, uh, to me, I'm a leader by example. But for him, title number one is just the beginning. If anything, I feel like my drive has gone up from it because I know how good that feels and I've felt the, uh, how bad losing is. And, you know, I just want to win, win, win. And with Tweehouse back at quarterback, look for the Bruins to win, win, win all the way to another deep playoff run this season. Eric Kelly, KOMU8 Sports, Columbia. Q4. Thanks, Eric. Tweehouse and the Bruins baseball graphic. team will get their state championship rings this Friday before the school's football season opener against Rockhurst, which I will be at. Now let's take a look at some baseball. Cards pitcher Justin Masterson will look for his fourth straight Stand win against four. the Reds today. Meantime, the Royals have the best record in baseball over the past 25 games at 20-5. and five. They are a game and a half ahead of the Tigers for the division lead, a position they haven't been in since late, this late in the season since 2003. Both games start in about an hour. And four is in. And that's sports. Five. Summertime makes for some beautiful views like sand and sunset. But one pair of adventurous Video's guys in. got a totally different view this week. We'll tell you about it after the break. Break. Three light. And up cue. 
Two climbers are taking on the north face of Switzerland's Eiger Mountain for a unique photo project and check out their amazing view. Extreme climber St uh, Stefan Sigrist and the reigning speed record holder Daniel Arnold climbed up the north face of the Eiger and captured a unique perspective of the mountain. They used a special Thank design you. cube to hold six cameras together. The camera showcased a range of angles on the mountain giving viewers a 360 degree Standby perspective five. of the Alps. And five. Coming up tonight at 9 and 10, a local group Stand is marching Rizzi. tonight to show their support for Michael Brown. And Obis is back on the agenda for Columbia City Council. Join us at 9 and 10 for the details. Rosie. Rosie's mic is not on. Rosie turned her mic off. For the rest of tonight. There we go. Looks like if it's a glassy. If I can get a microphone on. Can someone hear me? We can do start talking about what's going on with the out. weather. For the rest of tonight, partly cloudy to mostly cloudy. Yeah, and I we think might just even cut have out a pop-up shower here or there across mid-Missouri. Haven't seen much in the way of stretches of 90-degree days. Guys, this would be the biggest so far this summer. We've only seen two days of 90 right in a row. We'll stretch it to five this week. All right, that's our time for now. Thanks for joining us.